Hello. Now we'll talk about a concept called as extension method, which is kind of concept which is which was added again in C sharp three point zero, which means dot net three point five only. So uh, suppose now this is the extension method is kind of a concept which is which seems to be defeat to basic OP concepts. So this will show you. Suppose if we have a class, maybe A class. And then if we have another class in the code, which is B class. Yeah. And B tries to inherit from A. Normal inheritance is always allowed. Yeah. But suppose if at all I make this class sealed, which means now inheritance is banned for class A. B cannot inherit from class A anymore. And if you try to, you normally end up in error that you cannot just derive from sealed type called as A. So such inheritance gets banned. Why would somebody go and ban the inheritance then? Normally, when it comes to products, when it comes to, you can say, giving your libraries to your client, and then client is going to want to build some software against it, then you may want to restrict the usage of the libraries back at the client end. Maybe you are going to go and sell the libraries on license basis. Maybe you would like to, you would like your client to purchase your software or your library on per developer basis. But then giving a library to the client, it gives him advantage that he may go and extend the library at his end and can start using his own classes, which are like extended classes, by completely keeping the licenses on TOS. So normally in product-based companies, you may see sealed being used very often. Now comes to concept. like. Forget about only sealed type also. Sometimes we may not have access to the source code of the class, but we would like to have a method in that class. We wish that maybe so and so method may exist. But maybe if we are the client for the company which gave us the DLL, we are not the only client. We may be, let's say, maybe uh, n numbered client. Then just because we demand, maybe the software vendor may not add a method into so and so class. I'll give you a very simple example. Suppose if at all, if I add in here, suppose string type in node net, string str equal to suppose abc. Let's say abc is the input taken from the end user. And if at all I see str dot, I want, I, you can see many methods existing here. Maybe clone, compares to, copy to, contains and so on. But then I would like to have a method over here called as check for valid email address. Now we have clone, compare, contains and copy to four methods only exist from Microsoft, which they offer in a string class. I want one more method called as check for valid email address. Guaranteed, they are not going to change it only for me. Then comes the solution. Inheritances can always solve the problem. So instead of using string every time, I may go for defining my own string. So I may define my string inheriting from string. And then if I compile the code, you normally end up in an error again that my string cannot derive from a sealed type called a string. Now that's strange, which means neither they are going to go and change it for me, nor they're going to go and give a way to extend the string like type then. Then what am I supposed to do if at all I want to have a type or a method called as check for valid email address along with str then? Then obviously something which is by default allowed. What you can always do is you can always define a normal class, right? You can always define a method by yourself which returns boolean like check for valid email address. You can always expect string as a parameter. You can always write down your entire business logic for the method check over here. And then accordingly, you can return maybe the value. Maybe I'm just going to go and return now if S contains something called as at the rate over here. And then accordingly, I'll get Boolean. We know this is not a proper logic, but then this is just for the sake of writing something into the into the method. So I'm just going to go and return whether at the rate, at the rate is there in the string or not. This is very normal class. What normally you would have done then, you will normally create a normal class object equal to normal class. You will create object dot and call him as a call check for valid email address. Pass on str. You will get the result called boolean result here. 
and then you will print on the console that result. Again, you run the code, you get false as a result over here because it does not contain at the rate right now. So far, very simple. But this is what we all know we can do it. I insist to have a method str dot for readability over here itself. Check for value parameters. So do you wish to extend string class without even having access to string? In that case comes the extension method. So what you can do with the extension method then is first thing you can make this class static. You can make this method static. What does that supposed to do? That's supposed to mean. You will obviously only number of lines will be reduced then. Only instead of creating a new class object and calling a method, you will call it as normal class dot so and so method directly, correct guys? And you will pass on ultimately str. But as I said, I am not interested in calling a method in this way. I want str dot check for valid parameters. And then comes the solution. What you do is you pass on a keyword over here called as this, which means with respect to this project, this namespace, please extend the string type and allow me to have a method called as so and so with string type. Can this method take other parameters? Absolutely. I am going to pass on for completely no reason a parameter called as integer i. This is the second parameter, keep it in mind, is for no reason. Now what do I do? If at all anywhere in the code, if you say str dot, do you see the extension method now? Look at the icon as well. This icon down arrow denotes its extension method. And what we can do now, we can very well pass on the parameter that is expected. Then a question to you, how many parameters the method expected? Method expected two parameters. And how many, how many parameters now the method expects? It shows only one. The reason behind that, the important point to note in case of extension method, the object with which you call the method itself goes as a first parameter. And hence, what we did was we added a string as a first parameter here. If this method is going to want to extend some specific type, then please make sure that type comes first and you specify this keyword before that type. Can I put this over here as well? Absolutely no. This has to be the first keyword and the type you are going to want to extend has to be the first parameter. And anything else after that is all okay. But then those parameters are mandatory. You may pass on suppose 100 over here. You may again collect the boolean result. And then you may print the result on the console. And now if you say F5, you will get the false result as it is. Which means what we have achieved is basically we have just tried to extend a string type without even knowing the source code for the same. Without even having access to inherit the class or so. And we just tried to extend it further. This gives us a ultimately pleasure like maybe let's say we have str class may be extending so and so method or string class may be extending so and so method. But then behind the scene actually what is happening is exactly the same thing. We have a class being called, we have a method being called static class, static method. But then only instead of you writing that piece of code, you actually write down the code in much more readable manner right now. But then another question over here. If at all we have this string s Imagine if at all we pass on over here t and we expect t as a generic parameter, which means what we just have done guys. We have just tried to extend type t, which means whether it's an integer type also, whether it's an employee type also, employee emp, actually it doesn't matter because almost every type is what we have extended and then we have specified here type t as a parameter. And that's beauty of extension method that you may try to extend type t in case of here itself. Now, who is actually using this feature? So if you notice this, I'm going to go and put this string again. Suppose if at all I have got integer array defined somewhere in the code. So I'm going to go and comment this line for a while. So if I define, suppose integer array, arr equal to new integer array. And I'm going to go and define some values for this array. Suppose if I define 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, these are the values that we have got. What I want to do is I want to calculate average of integer array. So arr dot, I do not have a method, any, any method starting with a even. 
I have directly clone copy contains and so on. So I want average method here. But then for average method, obviously we can write down extension method for integer array type. But then instead of we doing it, this is very common functionality. Has Microsoft has never realized to offer a method like average with integer array? You must have seen that method. But where is that then? So that method is already authored into a namespace called system dot link you. Which means now if at all you check, you will directly see ARR dot. Which method is that now? Average. And notice the icon of this method again. So if you see the icon of the method, it's ultimately extension method. And then you can it, you can get completely average for ARR. You run this and you get 50 as average then. Again, point to note here. What will happen if I at all I can I put string str is equal to something else over here. And then if I see str dot, what do you see is again a method called as average. How come? Having average for a string is actually not a required functionality at all. But then we suddenly see it, there's a reason behind it. Because the method called average that you see here, if you say F12, average method does not actually go and extend anything else. Rather, they have got many average methods that we have here. And then these methods that you normally see, these guys actually, on an, you can say in a, in a way, these guys actually have T source as a parameter, which means you can actually go and pass on anything which is type T, which means generic type. So point to note here, average method appears with almost every type in .NET. Reason behind that, average extends type T, which means, now, this again another point to consider here, this method which I have just authored, this method resides on my machine. Does it also appear on your machine? Obviously no. So what is it that you require to do? Suppose if I compile this code into a DLL and if I, it's in this namespace called as test features. If I compile my code, if I give you the DLL, you may refer the DLL, you may refer the namespace and that's it. There you can have this extension method available on your machine in your code, which is written by me. So same way, if you don't want to touch the existing class implementation, if you do not want to go and maybe inherit the class or you don't have access to inherit the class, in such cases, you can still extend the class by using extension method concept also. And what you saw sometime back in link you is like method called as select, method called as from, method called as where. These are also available as extension methods, which means you can also say result dot where, result dot select. And you can actually go and fire the query, which is like further filter query on top of collection itself or the result that you may have received. So, Keep it in mind, extension methods are very useful in case of link you.